seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. Why wouldn't he just be at a people court? It's just it's just him appearing before the fucking Jedi Council. It is. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> With a fucking Little League audience behind him or something. <laughs> and does... Okay, I just want to clarify what his actual am I being detained argument is. Mm -hmm. Is his actual I am being detained argument is you can convict me, but when you come to get your stuff... I'm going to go all floppy like a sleepy cat. <laughs> yep. A sleepy cat, I say. <laughs> yep. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we're physically incapable of learning our lesson. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Freedom, Noah. Yep. Freedom is the answer <laughs> so to your you question. You are not being detained. And sitting 900 Don't miles fringe. to my northeast USA. is my bad friend <laughs> Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing! This movie got so many idiots tased. <laughs> <laughs> All the tasing videos you see on YouTube of the guy who won't roll down his window. This movie is the prequel yep. to those YouTube videos. You know? Every white guy who got tased is because of this. Yeah. Yes. yes, exactly. And also joining us again this week, sitting several pizza echelons to Eli's down is my <laughs> neutral friend Cecil from the Cognitive Dissonance podcast. Cecil, welcome back. I do feel like I'm being detained. I genuinely do <laughs> feel like that, though. That's so weird, right? So tell us, Heath. Like waiting for a Chicago pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what will we be breaking down today? We watched Atlas Shrugged 2, The Strike. The Strike. And that's like a worker strike, but they flipped it. It's the story of management being like, we go on strike. How do you like that? Flipped it on you. And then <laughs> a fantasy universe having to pretend that something meaningful happened, but they don't really <laughs> yep. know how. Right, right. But like, yeah, even in their own fucking movie, it has to be, oh, and I also set all the resources on fire and mm -hmm. blew them up, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Just like I found it on fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they forget to set some of it on fire in this one. So it's oh, just it's, like, yeah. oh, the, oh, he's gone. There's a big hole in the mine now. It's ruined. <laughs> yeah, God. What are you going to do now? We have all the metal and coal for ourselves. Guys, let's just fill it in and go home. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Atlas Shrugged Part 1, but the star power of Grant... <laughs> Bowler was too <laughs> fucking distracting for you. You will love this movie. It's switching to 420p the movie. It really is, man. 420p. Oh, God. <laughs> and of course, this is part two in a trilogy, so just in case you weren't listening along last week, I should catch you up on the action. Oh, God. Uh, in the first movie, Done. literally nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. The shit, so nothing. True. Trains it's trained so and a true. bunch of people with names like Flirt Danger Breast argued <laughs> near Mahogany. That's it. Yep. 95 yep. fucking minutes of that. Yep. And we shall long for the sanity of the oh, name no. of that last film. <laughs> no. Oh, arguing near Mahogany. That's my Ted Nugent cover band right there. Oh, I love God. it. <laughs> oh, Belf, you banks. Where you at, man? I need you. <laughs> oh. All right. Is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst plot coupons. So, you know, kind of like MacGuffins, but they, they would matter in the real world, but <laughs> yeah. they're so stupid. They don't know how to use MacGuffins at all. They don't know how to write a plot, though. Mm -mm. This book is so dumb. It needed magical vibranium steel to make the plot work so far, but that actually petered out. So they had to add literal cold fusion, infinite power from a little tube, mm -hmm. and, and then the plot still needed help. So now it's those two things. Plus, we're going to learn about a hologram machine that makes your entire property of like thousands of acres invisible from the outside. Yep. That will also need to exist. <laughs> yes. To make this plot work. <laughs> it's so Jesus dumb. Christ. It's such a bad book. 
So I'm going to go with an audible here on mine. I'm going with best worst disappearing pirate. Ooh. Oh, yes. Where the fuck is Ragnar Skanichko? Thank you, oh, Noah. He's, he's the perfect pirate. That's how you do it. Jesus Christ. I was waiting all goddamn movie for the pirate. <laughs> right. And no fucking pirate. Talked all about a pirate at the beginning and there was nothing. No pirates. Fucking Chekhov's pirate. <laughs> Every time Cecil mentioned the pirate last week, I was like, oh, Cecil. Oh, <laughs> Cecil. Oh, he's coming back. Just oh, not God. in not in this not in this movie. Fucking Chekhov's pirate. You All right. You can't carry a whole trilogy on flirt danger breath. <laughs> I'm gonna nominate this for best worst jet plane chase scene right? that happens. It's it bookends bad. the entire movie and it's genuinely glorious because like Passenger jets don't do that. Like, no, they don't nope, fly they sure like don't. that. Nope. <laughs> it's like pod racing. But, it is. Yeah. But it's an old antique shitty plane versus a fucking Harrier jet. And then they go the same speed <laughs> and they, they make the same sorts. It's so it's dumb. The best. But it's also, it's not like it's flying through a canyon or anything, right? It's making lefts and rights. And it's just like, you're in the air. You're just in <laughs> the air. It's power sliding somehow. You're not, are you, are you yeah. juking me? Yeah. I don't get it. It's so stupid. They pull the emergency brake when they go around the corner. <laughs> you know? Sparks are flying underneath the wings. Fly right over us. Classic move. Top gun, right? That's real. <laughs> and I'm going to go with best worst general trivia. So here's the thing. I think what happens when you watch a movie on Prime, Amazon pulls all the trivia related to an actor on IMDb for their general trivia that pops up while you're watching it on an iPad. As a result of that and the fact that they hired these actors from fucking nowhere, we got the craziest <laughs> on-screen trivia I have ever ever see there are so, so some many of them so boring though it's just yes. like this guy went to middle school in pennsylvania <laughs> yes literally <laughs> state there are so many <laughs> that i it. i put them in a separate doc i would like to read just a few of them there, there was like 40 i've limited it down to just the best ones i would like to read you just a few of the trivia facts that popped up on my screen as i viewed this film samantha mathis that's the main character Accompanied River Phoenix to the Viper Room on the night he died. Yeah. She was his girlfriend at the time. Yeah. What? Yeah, she totally <laughs> murdered River Phoenix. Yeah. Like, yeah. we all, right? Like, that's clear what happened there. Samantha Mathis, younger half brother and half sister, appeared as extras in Super Mario Bros. in 1993. Younger half brother aspires to be a film director. This appeared on my screen he when this aspires to be. Yeah. So he's not. Is what His they dreams. Mean. We are finding out about their <laughs> dreams in the IMDb. Her trip. brother's goals. I'm also not a film director. I mean, why not put me on there? <laughs> How about that guy Reardon? The Reardon guy, huh? Jason Begge. He is a friend from childhood of David Duchovny and worked with him for a time as a bartender. He originally prodded David into an acting career. Jesus, Next what? scene, Jason Begge attended the prestigious collegiate school in Manhattan with his best friend, David Duchovny. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Yeah, just one more. Two more. Sorry. Tom Wilson was once roommates with Sam Kinison and Andrew Dice Clay. Woof. Larissa <laughs> Olyanik. Oh, yeah. imagine the smell oh, of that room. Oh, 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 it's just those two noises for a year of his life. Oh, oh, oh. that sucks. It's sound effect comedy that rules. <laughs> this is my favorite one. It appeared on screen during the climax of the film. Larissa Olyanik. Her favorite store to shop in is Urban Outfitters. Are you kidding? <laughs> they said that? Yikes. Yep. I am doing well, trivia. It's good that we know that. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This is the second movie in a row where nothing happens to the same characters. So we need a minute to figure out how we're going to handle this episode. But we'll be back in a flash with all the stilted pomposity that is Atlas Shrug 2, The Strike. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Honestly, just a little Tamari. Tamari, yes. I bet that's great. It's pretty great. Hey, guys, you uh, chatting food? What's cooking? Serpent. That was a serpent jerk. Whoa, that's that's not nice. Who, who's this guy? Oh, uh, hey, guys. This is uh, Mental Illness. 
Don't worry about him. He's not that bad. Everybody hurts you. Um, Eli, have you considered getting some tools to manage that guy with BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? Well, we talk about BetterHelp a lot on the show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable before you go to therapy, but that's not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get so bad, and it can help you avoid those really low lows. So I don't have to be constantly harassed by my mental illness? No, you don't. Uh, yes, I do. Don't listen to them. You can handle me. I'm fine. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Damn, that does sound good. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp. Help whenever you need it. What if I'm the reason you're talented? <laughs> okay, enough now. The ad is over. The ad is over. You know, you're playing that character. Right? I said the ad is over! Okay. Okay, guys. Um, not gonna lie, has not been an easy week. As you know by now, literally every single actor involved with part one of this movie quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like all of them. Like even the the extras. I mm -hmm. just every even craft services won't come back. But that's okay. Yeah, you know, it happens with a lot of great movies. Mm -hmm. They 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 recast the Joker, for example. Didn't Heath Ledger die, though? That is no. not the point. Mm. They recast it, and everybody loved Jared Leto. I feel like they didn't. The point no, they, they did is, not though, is that now we can make part two, which is where we can really get our philosophical ideas across. You know, so, like, no holds barred, guys. Ha have at it. No, absolutely not. What's mine is mine, and you can't have any of it. Not an inch. Do you understand me? You want to come to my house and rob me like a no good thief? You go ahead, but I will not participate in your robbery willingly. What's mine is mine. I don't care who has to starve. It is mine. Mine. Wow. Dude, you just stated it perfectly. That was beautiful. So good. Really nailed it. Uh, uh, no, so, sorry. I, I, I was voice dictating to my wife about child support. What were, what were you guys talking about? I, I get it. I get it. I, I'm also divorced. I yeah. haven't seen my kids in years. <laughs> Shit. Have a good workout bench. The movie. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start this off with some title cards telling us we're in the near future. Apparently they've given up on pinning down the date. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd already been through 2016 and seen a little bit of what their politics could do. <laughs> right. At that point, they were pushing things back. The title cards come up and they're like, railroads are the only affordable means of transportation. I'm like, well, you spent a whole goddamn fucking movie telling us that last time. You know, you I do know. not need to <laughs> remind us. Well, as long as they don't immediately show us two planes in flight, I think sure. the title card is. Oh, we good. Then we'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. But by the way, their dystopian hellscape is a centrally organized rail system. Yep. Like, that's, what, <laughs> that's what they hate here. Yep. Like, also, that and less pollution. They're like, you know, fossil fuels are super expensive, so we're not using them as much. Hellscape. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Public transportation, hellscape. Must be avoided in all costs. Just the authors of this movie standing in a Japanese train station <laughs> screaming. <laughs> this is very efficient, but I don't like it. I want to wake up. <laughs> One guy just plucks his own <laughs> eyes out. He's just like, fuck this. <laughs> so Gets free health care. Yeah. <laughs> So we open up on an airplane chase. It, yeah. As we already said, a boring one. The fucking character in the movie, the actor playing Dagny, seems bored by this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, I know we've grown as people. Sorry, let me correct that. I know that you and Heath have grown as people. You don't have to include me in that. You can correct it one more time. Thank you, I know though. that Noah has yeah, grown as go. people since we started this podcast, so we don't talk about the physical appearance of the actors as much. But can we all just get on the same page and say, 
whatever basket of attractive they were reaching into for the first movie's actors, they did not reach into that <laughs> basket for these actors. These are the Wish.com yes. versions of yes. all the first movie's Hard actors. Hard agree. Well, and the first movie's actors were the Wish.com version of real actors, right? This is the Wish version of Wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Wish squared. Right. It's huge yes. downgrade. Huge downgrade. Agree. Hard agree, Eli. Huge downgrade. Yeah. So, and then, of course, the plane in front of her disappears all like it's going into Wakanda. And then her plane goes all Bermuda Triangle-y. Well, you know that it's going to it's gonna crash because they have that collision alert brought to you by the Zaxxon video game. <laughs> it's like in the middle of her console. You know that that's... It's the best. And she sees collision alert and she's like, okay, tap the brakes, tap the brakes, tap the brakes. Ah! No. <laughs> no. no. Also, like, there is no collision. What was it? I, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll get there at the very end of the stupid fucking movie. So she sees that <laughs> she says, who is John Galt? We get the title, right? And then it says nine months earlier. So even nearer future, I guess. I <laughs> <laughs> but we we open up on more people in a damn non-train. We open up on a, a, like people riding around on a little golf cart. And I'm just like, you guys keep saying it's all trains. They're showing me different vehicles. <laughs> but it was on a track. So it's like a baby train. I think it counts. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. But this is her taking the guy from the State Science Institute to see her prototype magic engine from the last movie in hopes that he knows somebody who can make it work. Yeah, and the science guy is like, yeah, a perfect magic power engine could end the depression. And she's like, even better, we could all be Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be clear, this scientist, he sees a cold fusion magical machine and he's like, we wouldn't need a centralized power grid with government. So the big takeaway from this scientist mm -hmm. is... From inventing cold fusion, the takeaway is getting rid of the red tape from the Department of Energy. <laughs> oh, God. That's what's exciting to This hear. is going to cut everyone's PSE and G bill, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, we've talked a little about the recasting that had to go on for this movie. Did they not get the rights to the original Magic Engine from the first movie? Right? They didn't. You're right. It's a different engine. You're 100% right. And they put it in Lexan, like, so you know it's, like, really important. Because she went out and she hired somebody to cut Lexan to, like, put a whole plastic case around well, it. Well, not only that, but she has a beep, boop, boop that, like, automatically Does. pushes it up. <laughs> Biometric, Noah. It's Biometric. Not, it, right? No, yeah, you're right. You're right. It, and it's not just a safe. I love this dumbass thing they do in movies. It's not enough to have the thing in a safe and take it out. There has to be some engine that somehow pushes it out of the safe for you <laughs> right? oh. lazy right. motherfuckers it seems like that would make that a lot less secure like couldn't we just <laughs> dig underneath that? <laughs> don't don't do that so okay so then we head over to the taggart train station in new york city to see these characters off there's a bunch of okay so these filthy pro these this was almost my best worst there's these these chimney sweep protesters they're going to be standing outside every building in a really tight cluster trying to seem like more people than they are. Yeah. <laughs> and even their protest signs are all chimney sweep dirty. They're all they smudgy. Are. <laughs> so yep. They are chim chimney. Did you guys pre-smudge those? Yeah, it's, it's thematic, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> And the idiots who made this movie made the sign, so it's like, I want free things. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, bad. Yeah, right. And they're all waving gas cans at each other throughout the entire thing, so they have to walk <laughs> to get their gas at, like, the gas, open-air gas market that's <laughs> right. on the side of the yes. street. I also want to point out that for Eddie... Because, of course, they got no actors. They just found another black guy. And the movie is so proud. They're like, you see? Oh, it's colorblind casting. Didn't have to recast any. <laughs> Friends. Lots of, I said with an S. I, we did. Two feet taller than the last guy. He is, guy. too. He's, yeah, he's enormous compared to the last daddy. <laughs> he's like a fucking hitman. Like, the difference in the size <laughs> of these guys, it's yeah. amazing. It's like Tom Cruise versus the new Jack Reacher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But this casting team is like, black guy. Right. Got it. Yep. Check. Nailed it. Also, the news introduces us to the fair share law, which 
they they will never exactly settle on what the hell this is. No. But they imply that it means that every company has to sell the same amount of stuff to everybody. What? What are they doing? I don't know. Means. Like, what if I don't want means. margarine? I just use <laughs> butter. I don't understand. To be clear. <laughs> That so so zero is the amount. Yep, that you can't ha- sell anything because somebody doesn't buy each thing. There's right. a person <laughs> who doesn't buy each thing, so there's zero. Everyone's at the grocery store. I walk in. Oh motherfucker! Okay, we can't buy anything. <laughs> Put it all back, everyone. We can buy God raspberries, damn and goddamn tofu Oreos. again, tofu or something. <laughs> Eli's just got a whole cart full of meat he doesn't want. He's like, <laughs> fuck, man, I gotta buy oh. this meat. But also, like, like molten steel and shit. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, like, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't need industrial bleach. <laughs> I, <laughs> did anybody suffer through this book to, is that how it happens in the book? Does anybody know? He? Yeah, I did. I have read this book and this is actually in the book. Yes, it is. Oh, oh wow. my God. It's, the, Ayn Rand <laughs> knows nothing of anything and just uh, wrote a 1200 uh, page book about economics at a lot of different moments. This is one of those times. She sure did. <laughs> she was just like, it's socialism means all the numbers are the same. What right. numbers? <laughs> all the economics numbers oh, Jesus. are same in oh, it's socialism. So stupid. You're telling me that equality does not mean equalness? Yeah, right. You lie to me, Gangrange. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, Dad, like for the third time in the first eight minutes of this movie, somebody has to ask who John Galt is so that Dagny can say, oh. I hate that expression so much. I like it because each actor gives it their best try to make it seem like not the stupidest words that ever been <laughs> written. Mm-hmm. Right. They totally right. do. Maybe if I ask it as a question, who is John Gold? Nope, that's dumb. <laughs> the dumb catchphrase. <laughs> no, it's got uh, who's John Gold? Who's John Gold? <laughs> who is <laughs> WNBC? <laughs> John Gold. So and of course this is the scene where they realize that there's just not enough freight to keep the two seven one line or whatever the fuck line it was up and they're going to have to close it down. Now the music director thinks that they're having, they have to put down a puppy, right? Or something along those lines. A hundred percent. Based on the music, I thought we were going to watch her like with the train in her lap. Like, yeah, Yep. <laughs> the train starts to sing, Don't you fret, Monsieur Marius. <laughs> Person comes in. Do you need another minute with the train? I'll just give yeah. you a minute. I'll right. just give you, I'm going to go wait outside. Is that just a ring the line? bell when you want me to come in and collect the ashes. Okay. <laughs> just ring the little. And then, of course, Sean Hannity shows up for a little cameo. Oh, God. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God, it's so fucking cringe. It's so cringe, man. It's just like, oh, oh they're the worst. They're the worst actors. And you know, they probably got paid more than the uh, regular actors did. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So he's doing a panel discussion on the train news network from from the last movie, talking about how awesome Hank Reardon is with his capitalism and his money. <laughs> it's so dumb, too. He's just describing. He's like, yeah, this metal, it's impossibly good in every way. And the rest of the panel is like, yeah, nobody's disputing that. It's we, it's good metal. Why it's stronger, you? lighter. Too. No, not. We're not arguing with that. <laughs> Punch this metal in the stomach right now. Punch the metal in the <laughs> okay, stomach. No. Okay. If I punch the metal, can we move on to the actual discussion? We're talking about whether we should, like, you know, use it for society in a good way. I'm Sean Hannity. Okay. And you, cut, you, cut, you cut. That was the episode. That was the episode. And then, and of course, then the movie speed transitions to a steel plant because molten stuff tricks us into thinking that things are happening on a movie like level here. Oh, yeah. And this, this is where the secretary comes in and, and I, it's very confusing how the order process works in this factory because she's reading him the orders one by one. And he's like, I don't, I don't think you need to do that. There's a better use of the time, but we realize it's just so that when the, the scientists are asking for their steel, they're not going to get any. Right. The state science institute can go fuck itself if they think that he's going to sell them reared in steel. So <laughs> let's be clear, right? He's got magic steel that he won't sell to the government out of spite. Because, like He's like, no, you make your bridges out of inferior steel because fuck you. That's the good guy. And the terrible fucking fate that will befall the world is the government doing something about it. But, right. <laughs> the go- government not letting him 
Paul the steel. Yeah, no, yeah. The the movie's arguing with itself here because they're complaining that the Fair Share Act, that's the socialism mm-hmm. thing that's like all numbers are equal now. But they're <laughs> arguing that like Fair Share Act says we can't meet demand with supply. But like that's a that's not how it works. But like you're not willing to sell to somebody who wants to buy it. So you're yeah, not do, you're right. for spite not meeting demand with supply. Exactly. Supply with demand, actually. And then the rest of the movie, he's going to complain that they're stealing it from him. Like, no, we keep offering you We're money for it, to, stupid. Like, they should steal it from him, but just leave money in its place <laughs> at a certain point, right? Are you confused? <laughs> I want to commerce with you. Like, yeah. you like, you like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. They even have, like, the guy from the state, sci- the little sniveling nerd from the State Science Institute shows up to try to talk some sense into him. The actor, by the way, sounds like a pack of unfiltered camels, right? This guy, the <laughs> he Rudin. really does, really does. Like he gargled razor blades, man. Oh my god! Every guy that ever <laughs> hasn't checked a girl's ID to see if she's eighteen is magnified in this man's voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I can help you out with your high school payments. You <laughs> pay for high school these days. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something about men in the boardroom. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the rest of that sentence. I'm nice sorry. What you say? Steakhouse that isn't near my my wife's house. Come on, you sound like a barrel of gravel rolling down a hill. I literally can't understand anything you're saying. I do want to mention, though, at a certain point during the scene, he gets a broken up phone call, like a broken down Dagny, who's super sad that she had to put the train 93 down. Yeah, like yep. She calls him out of nowhere just be like, I had to put old 93 down. <laughs> And then she like wheezes for a minute and he's like, yeah, I'm real sorry. I don't know what to do. You want more steel? I don't really understand her relationship. I don't know what's happening. Flash cut to her like throwing rocks at the 93. Get out of here, huh? Get out of here. I never loved you. Trying to pull the 93 out of a sinking thing of quicksand. <laughs> Dagny's brother James Taggart he's being rich and douchey you can tell because he's generously spending money what a piece of shit this is the first upgrade in the cast though they went with a guy from Better Call Saul first upgrade that's all I'm gonna say okay first upgrade all right so yeah and he goes into the dollar general to buy some billionaire ties the way you do yes seems like a weird way to go and the cashier there is super impressed. She thinks him and his John Galt line is pretty swell. <laughs> Can I just say, they do not do this character justice. It's my, f- it, oh God, Pirate's probably my favorite character, but she's top five favorite characters from the book because Ayn Rand is so sure you're like, can you imagine him marrying a grocery store clerk? <laughs> <laughs> She totally does. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like a reoccurring theme throughout the book where she's just like, I don't have any diamonds. And Ayn Rand is just like laughing her ass off in her hotel room being like, she had no diamonds. Got you on my thing. <laughs> <laughs> no diamonds. T- typical socialist. And her pickup line to him is like, you built the John Gall line. You know what that meant? And I'm thinking literally nothing because the oil baron burned all right. his it oil a even... week later, man. Yeah. It's like one week they ran oil and then after that, they're like, nope, it's on fire. And John Galt drafted all the fire putter outers. So we're <laughs> fucked. We're just <laughs> fucked now. She even says during this conversation, she says, you defied the expression, who is John Galt? I'm like, <laughs> what would that mean? Even by what you've described that is meaning. Nobody isn't not John <laughs> to Why the should say it backwards? John Galt? I yeah. don't know, which is converse, inverse. Whomst is John Galt? <laughs> so... So, yeah, so, but he takes the dollar store cashier to a piano concert, but right in the middle of the piano concert, the pianist gets John Galted. Okay, I'm sorry. (laughs) I have to talk about so much about this thing because it is very clearly an idiot's idea of fancy music. It's just like, (laughs) it's so bad. It's really not good. (laughs) <laughs> okay, that was Eli ended it so much better than this. This is oh, Richard Halley. Yeah, he just trips over the fucking piano to close. Yeah, it's so <laughs> dumb. It's this is supposed to be the number one pianist in the world because they rank. Of these course, things it is. Yes, this, right. Like, yes, the number one contender. Th- this, there's and- the number one philosopher in the world. This is the number one pianist. <laughs> 
in the world. He was drafted number one out of college. He yeah. was yeah, like Juilliard. Or oh, yeah. Number one seed held the seed. This is. Yeah, they traded up for him. They traded up for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Number one ranking, BCS, Associated yes, Press, the whole thing. Absolutely. Unanimous number one. <laughs> and he, he does like this piano concerto. They, they're able to do like. 20 seconds of it mm-hmm. and then the end is just like gah, 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 and it's like a ruined orgasm ending of a piano it's so <laughs> fucking bad like, here's here's what i have to say with the exception of no illusions who plays very well by ear this is what everyone who ever has said i play by ear sounds like when they say they play by ear it's just like blank blank blink de blank blank huh can you imagine i made that up myself <laughs> and you're like yeah Eli's being super nice. I don't play by ear. I don't know what he's talking about. But I play by fingers. That's fucking stupid. I don't right, even yeah. understand. <laughs> even... Of course he made it up. He won the Improvisement Trophy in college. Improvisement. It's like Heisman. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Forget it. Forget it. Stupid. <laughs> but yeah, this this pianist is uh, is tired of the moochers. <laughs> yes. Yes, he's decided to go and live in the fucking secret valley where people will really appreciate his piano acumen and not make him <laughs> play the same notes, the same number of notes yeah. as everyone else, I guess. He's a pianist who's being overtaxed by the government, apparently. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's the perfect pianist for a capitalist fucking commune, according to John Galt. Yep. What does that mean? The number one <laughs> What are you gonna do? Draft pick. I only play the men in jingle. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so and oh, and this is where we meet Teller. Yes, from Penn and Teller is in a movie. And he talks. Yay! That fucks her up. They both like this this book way too much. It's yeah, they do. They very, are they are sh- both yeah, libertarian. Libertarian's gonna libertarian. Hundred percent. That's what I said. So yeah, so Dagny's leaving work, but there's a poverty riot out front. And and so Teller is there to say, hey, maybe you should go out back and be afraid of the poor people. And she says, I'm not afraid of the poor people and walks out the front. (laughs) (laughs) And you get to learn a little magic secret here, right? Which is the reason Teller doesn't talk is because he sounds like that. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Wait a second, girl. Hold up. You are not going to want to go out there, okay? Because they are just shots fired. Okay. You Yikes. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a street sale at Sam's out there. Get out of here, girlfriend. <laughs> Come with He's a security guard. Yeah. Teller is supposed to be a security yeah, guard. Uh-huh. I wanted so badly for him to go up and break out there. All right, everyone, get the fuck out of the way. I'm going to start bitch slapping you. Slap, slap. <laughs> He'd be more believable as Jack Reacher. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so... So yeah, so but she goes to hang out with Hank. He's mad at her for showing their awesome fucking foraged engine to the State Science Institute guy who said his steel was stinky and 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 was a poo poo butt. <laughs> yeah. And then and she's like, but we have to figure out how it works. And great minds are in short supply. What with all the John Galting, they're even taking the pianists now. Yeah. <laughs> all the top ranked artists are gone. Who's going to do the good art? Yes. What's what? going to happen to society now? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Who's going to use the blackest black? Oh, <laughs> also- <laughs> <laughs> who's going to make a giant chrome bean? Right, I mean, what are we, we going to do? not have chrome beans. Also, she says this is so fucking stupid she says did you hear about that pianist guy from the last scene he burned all his compositions before he disappeared i'm like they'd be on tape though we would have piano recordings (laughs) of some sort this is now we're in now (laughs) the paper's magical shut up it's just like oil also if he he burned them he did the world a favor i mean let's be honest he did the world a favor yeah that was fucking terrible I also love the idea that he shows up at fucking Galt's capitalist, you know, utopia, and they're like, all right, great. Let's hear some of those compositions. He does. Oh, okay. So, you know, uh, you, know. you know how the oil thing, the guy did the oil thing? <laughs> I thought that was just what we did. And, Fred's uh, got slacks on the boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> He's got slacks. Wait, one second. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh my god, it's chopsticks. I just realized his own music is chopsticks. Yeah. Now that I remember. <laughs> Fred's got slacks as a winner. <laughs> so um so okay, so we cut back to the engine and now we have to meet Quentin, who is like 
I, I don't know, like the, the next best scientist that the John Galt Society didn't quite take yet, mm-hmm. right? Diedrich Baker. Who? D- he's from Idiocracy. Sure. Okay. Yeah. He's from the Drew Carey show, Drew which Carey is not show. surprising because Drew Carey's a piece of shit who's yeah. a Republican <laughs> horrible asshole. Everybody's like one degree of away from horrible asshole in this. You might know him for being almost as funny as Ryan Stiles, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so but he's checking out the prototype engine and he thinks he might be able to get it to work if you just gave him 200 years or until the beginning of act three yeah no it's it's like five <laughs> minutes or 500 years those are your yeah, options it's between <laughs> five minutes it's it's going to be divisible by five it's going to be a unit divisible by ten, yes. five that will be how much time it will take me and she's like i can give you all the money you need and he says i don't need your money i just need to know that if i make it work you will give me a lot of money <laughs> damn wait what <laughs> Are we- hey, does anyone who's in this fictional universe understand how the fuck money works? I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to feel like an alien who's faking it. <laughs> Did you read the Art of War recently? Because everything you've been saying is about like samurai chopping arms off, and that's unrelated <laughs> to this cold fusion thing. I just need you to make it. The, the dialogue threw me. I didn't think he wanted money. I thought he just wanted to like put her in his collection and skin her alive because that's what he said. Oh, there you sure. go. I mean, he yeah. literally <laughs> says, I'm going to skin you alive. Yeah, he does. And I was like, no, I take I take him at face value here. I don't think he's talking about money. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's talking about putting her in a well and blowing fucking lotion down to okay. her. That's what I think. All right. Yep. That's entirely possible. It's the ending I was rooting for, at least. <laughs> Basic freedom, Cecil. There's, there's a third yeah, movie. No, it's absolutely there's, it still there's be a there. pirate in the well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut to a, a hotel where Reardon is meeting with fucking slapdash Danigar. I don't Danigar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Danigar. Hey, i Your names have been a little bit weird. So can you just give the next guy just a normal like American name? Dan Danigar. Danigar. <laughs> so. Are you are you chewing on a bunch of rubber bands? Or no. Do you want to name, <laughs> you want to name the character Danigar? Well, but but so but they're colluding. Danigar and Reardon are like you know, hey, the fair share law means I have to sell the same amount of steel to every human in America. I don't even fucking know. So, but you need the steel more, so we're gonna break the law. I sure hope this doesn't come back to bite us later in the film. So that guy leaves and then he's in it. Hank Reardon is still in the hotel room and his wife shows up and he's just like, I fucking hate you. And she's like, I know, <laughs> but the, the movie hasn't given you any reason. I'm sure the book probably made it clear why you, but I'm just some poor woman who you loathe all the time and Yikes. prematurely ejaculate on to. That's it. <laughs> Oh, remember it was a different actor, but you did that to the other yeah. actor. Yeah, the yeah. other actor you came really fast. Not you, the other actor did that to another. Other, actress, yeah, we, neither of us was there. It's a different. I was also but not there. We represent yeah. people. One, you come fast. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's also this fucking amazing. So she's there to get him to come to like the wedding, right? James Taggart's wedding. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't want to go anywhere with you. And she's like, Yeah, you have to for appearances. Trust me. I don't want to fucking see you. And he's like, Okay, but you can't stay in my hotel room. She's just like, I don't want to stay in your fucking hotel room. And I wrote in my notes, Wow, Heath, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> like, I don't, like attacking I don't, you. I don't understand this, but, this comment you, you just made. <laughs> what does that even mean? But yeah, so but James is marrying that like separate rooms. Dollar General cashier <laughs> from from earlier, right? And so we cut to their rich person wedding reception, and there's this great stupid fucking scene where the where the cashier comes up to Dagny and she says, "Hey, I heard about the first movie, and I just want to say I don't believe that you're the good guy. I think you're terrible and shitty." And she's like, "Well, I'm not, so so fuck, fuck you. I'm objectivist, so." <laughs> They have this fucking amazing moment that you know Anne Rand was just high-fiving herself in her little hotel room. She says, I'm the woman of the family now. And Dagny says, yes, well, I'm the man. And I was like, fuck yeah, Ayn Rand. Sexism. Good for you, girl. <laughs> well, so, Score! To pull off that dumb, sexist-ass line, they needed the most ridiculous and senseless I'm the woman of the family. That's not a thing people say. <laughs> it's so stupid. 
which demonstrates exactly how sexist this whole fucking thing is. Right, exactly. right, right. Yeah. What do ladies say to each other when they are in competition? Probably like, I am the woman. I have the, the most other one, vaginas of the And then the other one says, no, I am the woman. Okay, vagina wrestle, go. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Women do this, right? I declare a vagina war. No. So, I'm Googling it right now. I hope so. Yeah, right. God. <laughs> Cecil. Wow, a lot of results. Cecil, there's going to be a lot of results, let me tell <laughs> there's you. There's a lot of results. I'm weeding through them as we speak. Go ahead, right, just go yeah, on yeah, without yeah. me. No, no worries. Put it in quotes. Yeah. So, and then fucking Francisco Danconia shows up. Yeah. And he wants to mysterious about John Galt a little bit. He's like, do I know who John Galt is? Maybe I don't know who John Galt is. And they're like, we don't fucking care, <laughs> man. He calls her slug when he shows up. Yep. Like mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And then that's, there's no mention of it. It's just like, hey, slug. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? Why is... Yeah, she says, you haven't called me that since we were kids. And it's like, all right, that's all we need to know about that, apparently. That's it. Okay, great. That is a reference to something that we haven't talked about yet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking audacity of this movie to recast all of its actors... And never introduce a single person right. in part fucking two of their trilogy. Right, yeah. Legendary. Yeah. Francisco Danconi is the only one we know because we're like, oh, person of color. This is right. This yeah. is their, <laughs> this is their That's quote, not Eddie. Mexican guy <laughs> yeah. from Chile or Argentina. Yeah. Yeah, it's Eddie and Francisco. Yeah, Those exactly. Are the only two that we know are different dudes. So, and then we get this incredible moment. This is to me the high point of the movie, right? It's the funny. I laughed the entire fucking time. Because uh, again, they're rooting for the wrong guy in this moment. So James Taggart has a speech that he wants to give at his wedding reception, right? It's his wedding reception. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. This is a. Uh important piece and he's like you know i'm a real man of the people i married a gross cashier and it everything totally says that. <laughs> <laughs> he says but money isn't the but money's the root of all evil it doesn't matter and francisco interrupts like they said you know like, like he's like i have not yet forever held my peace hold on <laughs> I have a oh question. Actually, it's more of a comment <laughs> in four parts. <laughs> and he gives a fucking speech. <laughs> he gives Gordon Gecko's greed is good speech. He does, <laughs> he does, does a yeah. participatory speech where he loses an argument to a room four times without noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the middle of it, he takes questions. Like, yes. he interrupts the speech to take questions from the crowd. It's like a Q&A session yes. of his interruption. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so his point is, money isn't bad. Nobody said that. It's just a tool, but it's a great tool, so it's a good tool. I love it. It's not about how much money you have. It's whether you deserve it. And then, just fucking world-shatteringly, he's like, without money... We'd all be enslaving each other all the time. Oh, and they're like, follow so up. And he's like, no follow up. I'm <laughs> no, I'm leaving. It's supposed to be this genius speech. And he's, yeah. he just describes how buying stuff works. That like, yep. yeah. there's this thing that we call Monet or money. And it's a <laughs> unit of current. And it's like five minutes. Everybody's like, yeah, just, we know what we used to use. Is. Cowrie we yeah, we're good. So, yeah. We beat you up now. You can't interrupt a wedding speech. We all beat you up now. <laughs> and he's so proud of himself. He like turns his champagne glass sideways and drops it like a mic and then walks out. Yeah. And then Hank Reardon follows behind him. And he's like, hey, man, that was a great money speech. Monet, huh? I've heard of this stuff. You, you really seem to know it. <laughs> And he, and he says, you know, I like you, Hank, despite everything we set up between the two of us in the first movie. Previous movie, yeah. So let me warn you. <laughs> Let's just throw that out. Don't invest in my stock. I'm going to blow up my own mines. And he's like, well, aren't explosives just used in mining to like, <laughs> to mine? Don't you just do that that's all just the time? That's, yeah. that's how this is. He's like, it's, don't, don't ask a lot of questions. Not the useful. It's just don't. Not, it's bad to blowing up. We're done with the scene. It was just exposition. You're being so, an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Hinting that something might eventually happen is what passes for suspense in this movie. So we're going to take a break there while the tension is high. But we'll be back in a flash with even more Atlas Shrug 2, The Strike. 
Uh, I think Peruvian means from the country of Peru. Right? Okay, but do we have to go there to get them or just like the origin of the... Uh, Guys, um, I'm waiting on my yams here. Oh, beans, the yams. Yeah, coming, coming, Cecil. Hey, guys, guys, what's with all the shouting? Did you light Cecil on fire again? No, no. He offered to make us dinner if we did the shopping. But I think Heath and I are a little spoiled by HelloFresh because he's asking for a lot of weird stuff. Oh, okay. I'm back. Um, when I left, he was sniffing the yams for umami. What does that mean? I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. What's Hello Fresh? With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Shallots. Are, are, are these shallots or chives? I always get them confused. Uh, just just bring both, just in case. I don't know. He's very intense. Home-cooked meals. Doesn't that take up a ton of time? Cecil's been in there for like five hours. Uh, actually, HelloFresh cuts back on the time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Plus, quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options, provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. Neither of those were shallots, by the way, just so you guys know. Okay, but HelloFresh has to be super expensive, right? Delivering ingredients and recipes right to your door? Actually, according to the Zagat Dining Survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save, on average, over $65 a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Onions! Yeah, coming! Coming, Cecil! Jesus! HelloFresh actually sent us a free week to try, and the bags unpacked from the temperature-controlled box in seconds. I, I literally make a HelloFresh recipe every week because it's such a family favorite. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Oh, okay, did you tell him go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts? Yeah, yeah, I did. Good. All right, guys. Well, thanks for the heads up. Any idea when the food will be ready? Are they still cherry peppercorns? I'm throwing it all out and starting over. Dumb. You know what? I'm just going to make a hot pocket in my room. Sorry, I got Malabar. Can I have a hot pocket? No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd like to say money might not buy happiness, but Clara, you've given me the greatest. Objection. What? Uh, sorry, what? Objection. Um, It's not. It's not a court. This is a rehearsal dinner, and I'm giving a speech. I'm the groom at this wedding. If money is so bad, then how come you all use it? Huh? That's actually a two quote quote. Yeah, yeah. You do bad things. That's not an argument in support of your bad thing. Java rolled. Dude, sit down. You would love that, wouldn't you? Um. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But hear me. Money is a tool. It can be used for good or for evil, but it is a tool, nothing more. Yeah, yeah, okay, but but I didn't say money like the concept of it was inherently evil. Who do you think was arguing that? Is that what you think is, is happening? I believe you mean whoopst was arguing that. No, I, I do not. That's now, not if you'll excuse I mean. me, I'm going to go jerk off in my car. Uh, okay. Bye. Wish you were dead. Me too. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit where we're going to rejoin the action with Hank showing up at Dagny's hotel room for a good old fashioned fuck. <laughs> In a glass bedroom. Yes. Yes. Weird ass <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah, it's a strange bedroom. Very strange. Felt like Hannibal Lecter's bedroom somehow. Yes. Yeah. This dude has been so gross so far. She's asleep when he comes in the room, and I was like, ah, he's going to jerk off on her. Oh, <laughs> this movie thinks this is okay. Oh, God. Wow. Okay. That was what, where you went with that? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. But he basically he comes in, and he's like, I got rid of that shitty-ass wife of mine. Let's fuck. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this movie could not be worse if they showed him proudly taking his post-sex piss all over a public toilet seat. <laughs> But he's peeing and it's split. It's split down the middle. So he's doing both sides right. at the same time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay. So the next morning he goes back to his hotel room, right? After all of the extramarital fucking and his wife is there and she knows he's been doing extramarital fucking. And he's just like, it's okay because I hate you. I fucking <laughs> no. hate you. 
you want a divorce so that I can call you a bitch on Facebook? <laughs> and, then, and then when people unfriend me, I'll, I'll message them and I'll be like, what the fuck did you do that for? And then... And then, yeah. <laughs> if he had just dissolved into a puddle of tears and cum oh, and spent the rest of the movie as a puddle of tears and cum, I couldn't hate him more. <laughs> Puddle of Tears and Cum should be on the the, the, the like subtitle. That's of this my that's, that's my cover, cover band. band. No, yeah. I, I call it first. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> so he goes, "Fine, I'll divorce you." And she says, "No, I don't want to make it that easy on you." And I'm like, "You go, girl. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, fuck him." But she she says she's like. I won't have any of this stuff. And I'm like, no, you don't know how divorces work. Like, you'll get a lot of it, lady. You'll be fine. You'll be good. This is fine. I get like half your spite metal that you're trying to keep (laughs) from the world. I'm going to give it all to the world in your fucking face. Yeah, I'll sell it to the government. Literally going to sell it to the government the first chance I get. I'm going to give it to poor people in the same amounts. I'm going to give one (laughs) handful of metal to every poor person. (laughs) Fuck you. And I don't know why Ayn Rand wrote these great lines for this character. She, yeah. she comes in with such... At the end, she's like, look, you think you're this extraordinary man, but you're just another guy with a sticky dick. You're just like a selfish bitch. Right. I wrote my notes. She explains exactly what a piece of shit he is, and somehow the writers still don't know. They wrote this. Right. Yeah. Right. She gives this amazing speech. She, she explains, like, you think you don't owe your success to anybody? That's fucking dumb. We're in a society, whether you like it or not. This all worked out for you because of society. And then the movie's like, fuck. Oh, shit. Which we uh, land, like, did we, we switch it? Blow some shit up. We should blow some shit up. Scene. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they literally cut because he started crying. Yeah, puddle of tears and come. He's like, oh, you don't talk to me like that in my chilies. <laughs> Not my chilies. All right, right. his his face is turning into tears and come like Back to the Future. Yeah, so, this is okay. actually we have to cut. So then, so we cut over to Dan Conio's pre exploded minds. This is my favorite part of the whole movie. Oh God, I love this so much. He has two level so explosions. Oh, oh. Best. <laughs> so. Here's the thing. Apparently, I I would have assumed that like CGI explosions would be the same cost regardless of size. <laughs> How big they are, right? right? That's what but, I thought. But they could only afford several small. It's like Mario didn't hit it on the six. He only hit it on the three, you know, at the <laughs> end of the level or something. You guys have the budget for an M60. How about that? There you go. <laughs> That's what you get. They're just standing there with sparklers outside of the mine. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is that it's clearly stock footage, right? So they're showing stock footage of this mine mm-hmm. that they've sort of blue tinted a little in the screen. Uh-huh. And then they're making shit blow up and the trucks do not react to the no! explosions. They're like, well, like, we still got some mining hey, to do. I'm <laughs> driving on the road. What am I doing? I'm just driving. Oh, there's that explosion. Well, that's the day it's mine. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Lou, Lou, Lou. That's going to help us get more copper because that's how this business works. <laughs> okay, that's, right. There's yeah. big holes in our minds is kind of the point. Yeah. It is weird that it looked like demon vultures attacked yeah, this very small <laughs> part of the mine. That's different than normal. But, yeah. you know, Just two, helpful. two little exhaust ports. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a Luke Skywalker is going to come and drop some <laughs> fucking <laughs> torpedoes down. Or... <laughs> the womp right in there. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they got the news guy has to come on and says, there's been reports of extensive devastation at the mine and the mine company will never recover. Meanwhile, they're panning over these like three little potholes in the yeah. mine. <laughs> okay. But even if it was way more than that, even if that whole copper mine exploded in a big explosion, that would make the price of copper go up right? and other copper companies <laughs> would do better and it'd be fucking fine. Oh. Or they just sift through the rubble like they would right. if they blew it up normally. <laughs> because it's a it's a fucking mine. Oh no, now it's a mine some more. <laughs> right. It's they it didn't blow up the copper. He didn't vaporize oh, the elements God. or whatever. Oh, it's so good. He just pours a bunch of baking soda down there. <laughs> this will do it. Now it's anti copper. What? <laughs> Now it's blue dye, huh? You guys watch Five Minute Crafts? <laughs> so meanwhile, at the Reardon Steel plant, the State Science Institute guy shows up, but Reardon still won't sell his steel. His name's his name's Dr. Ferris, by the way. It's, it's, it's very, subtle. <laughs> very subtle. Ferris. <laughs> Iron. 
Yeah, so so Dave Ferromagnetic or whatever says, yeah, but we know about the deal that you did with Splark Daniger, and <laughs> and we're go- we're gonna like really, you know, you you violate you knowingly violated the Fair Share Act, mm-hmm. so we're gonna take you to a imaginary weird court. I love this because he was like, hey, you remember when you were like, go fuck yourself, come take my medal, um. We're doing that now. Yeah. We're the government. <laughs> so yes. that was a weird threat. We, we we can do what we want. We will take your medal. And we're going to leave this money on your nightstand. Yeah. Last right. chance. <laughs> we will we will buy it from you and you don't go to jail. You can still yeah. do that if you You're want. Still going to still going to buy it. Yeah. No. Nope. You, no. Okay. You yelled no like a child and ran out. OK. 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 And this will be the first time that the movie like lightly grazes its fingers over the idea that when they come to arrest you can just be like no and yeah. they'll be like oh we didn't expect him to say no we no one's ever like that. resisted arrest before he said it very gruffly too he's a very authoritative voice yes sounds like common tears <laughs> but like scary so yeah then the news comes on and tells us that the department of justice is indicting hank for his fucking snit right then we get some airplane landing B-roll that would embarrass an 80s soap opera. Yes. And that's <laughs> Dagny going to see Splart Daniger. Yes. So she goes to his office, but Mr. Daniger can't see him because he's busy talking with a mysterious man in a hat who's come to see him. <laughs> and uh, am I wrong or does she catch him mid-disappearance? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a awkwardly like wave his hands as he backs out of the room just like oh uh sorry smoke bomb smoke bomb right look over there there's a shoulder is the pope behind you right now i think he is i think the pope's behind you so yeah but he gives her this fucking this speech that once again the movie seems to think is really nailing it, explaining why capitalism is great, but it's literally the exact same speech that they used to justify the triangle trade. So mm-hmm. it doesn't. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. It's yes. Literally, <laughs> I didn't even associate it with the triangle trade, but that is what they're saying. He's reciting this like it's poetry too. Mm-hmm. He's like, "There's this beautiful cycle of coal, and then coal is made into steel, and you use the coal." Fire the steel, but you also put it in the steel, and, and then, then you the use steel the coal in the makes steel in trains, to make the trains, train, train and tracks, and Paul tracks Ryan of steel. is like, yes, steel, tracks, tracks, tracks steel, and steel, steel yes, back and to coal. coal. Okay, <laughs> that one didn't make sense. I couldn't get back in the circle from steel to coal backwards. But poetry circle, so dumb. And his point in that weird fucking spoken word poem is like, as long as no one ever stops. Feeding the money into the giant furnace that is American greed, everything will be perfect. <laughs> It'll be great. Right. Be great. Yeah. I mean, what? Are you telling me that money isn't infinite? Because that is socialism. I mind rant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Infinite growth. And he keeps he keeps calling this is what's his actual name? Ken Daniger Splark, Splark Splans from Breast. Yeah, yeah. Ken Daniger. Yeah. Ken Daniger. He keeps saying it's my coal. Like because he's gonna now he's getting taxed and maybe there might be laws. So he's he says right. I pressurized that carbon myself yeah, with right. my Don't own two hands. You didn't do shit. You didn't create anything. I raised those dinosaurs from yeah. babies. <laughs> You're pillaging the earth and right. taking money for right. it. You didn't do anything. You didn't even invent something. You just. Pull it out of the ground and then sell it. That's it. And you don't actually pull it out of the ground. Some other dude does. Yeah, we saw him. He was the one ignoring the explosions earlier. <laughs> yeah, earlier. Yeah. You pay him over his career less than the cost of his mesothelioma treatment or whatever. <laughs> right. Yes. Fuck you. Oh, and then the movie somehow manages to get stupider from there. This is where Francisco goes over to Reardon Steel to have the conversation with Hank. Oh, God. This is the name drop conversation. This is the Atlas Shrugged moment. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Francisco is like, damn, all this government oversight. That's the enemy. And and Hank is like, yeah, sure is hard to be a billionaire these days. (laughs) (laughs) And this is... This is where they try to do this great thing. And admittedly, this quote was spoiled for me when Heath did this book over on Citation Needed. But it's so good because he's like, what would you do if you were seeing Atlas and he had the whole world? And he was like, oh, this is 
just finish your speech, man. Very, I'm not, very I'm not, heavy. And his sweat was filled with blood, and his eyes, you could yeah, see, yeah, yeah, suffering. Yeah, yeah. No, I know you're, you're muscles setting up the things. Were muscles were trembling. His veins were bulging with the <laughs> I feel like pressure you, you of the earth to say on his shoulders. And you in kiss particular. the tip just a little bit. Just, but it's <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Just doing okay. your friend a favor. <laughs> right. The head of the penis, can you just finish your speech? Go ahead. So, Manly Shrug, that's the name. He says, yeah, so what would you... <laughs> He's like, what would you tell Atlas to do? And he's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's you, a stupid question. You're going Math. somewhere yeah. with this. Just tell me where the fuck you're going. He's like, you would tell him to shrug. And he's like, oh, right. The Atlas. Okay. Got shrug. it. Got now it. it. Question. Does shrugging drop an object you're holding? Nope. No. no. So, <laughs> it, just build, it just builds your shoulder muscles a different way. That's all. You know, yep, it's it just would shrugging. shift also, the weight. Atlas could, in this stupid fucking metaphor, Atlas, I want to see Atlas walk away and then, oh, it's like a billion people holding it up as it turns out. He wasn't doing shit. Right. He yeah. had nothing to do with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fuck you. But just as you're thinking, wow, this is really fucking boring. They're like, right. No, we know. So how about what if there's a hole in the steel bucket? Right. So suddenly, like, the red alert goes off and there's a disaster in his steel refinery and there's molten steel splooging out everywhere. And there's no way you're going to get through it unless the two billionaires run down onto the floor and save everyone. They oh. keep, like, diving into people and pushing them out of the way just as something <laughs> falls in that space. Yeah. And, and then one billionaire picks a shovel up like that really happens in yes. the real world. That's amazing. Well, he here's the thing. All the top-ranked firemen in the world are gone. Oh, That's right. right. No, you're right. At this point. Backdrafted. And then <laughs> they, they, had to, they had to make an action scene out of shoveling sand yes. in a circle. Well, right. Right. The, the fucking music is going like, huh? Because there's fire and glowing shit. And we're like, we know those people are just shoveling. And it was bad CG, too. It was bad CG yeah. coming, shooting out of there. The shadow's all wrong. And they're like, no, throw the fucking cool whatever around it. So stop it. And it's like the shadow is literally on the wrong wall. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm not even a ranked fireman. I know how to shovel sand in a circle. I'm not even on. I'm not seated at all. <laughs> also, they, they fail. Like the funniest on. part about this weird little bromance fantasy about doing <laughs> anything classic at all for your company is like that they fail right like the thing explodes they don't yeah exactly they don't save the day so yeah so we get some suspenseful shoveling and then we cut <laughs> to the aftermath of the big steel explosion but like hank has to be like hey man right before everything started blowing up you were like hey man you should blow up your factory that's what you said immediately before my factory blew up i mean i could be a coincidence i guess i feel like it's not <laughs> so and dan cody was like is it and he's like i don't think it is and he's like I, I is it who's john galt Ooh. i'm actually no no don't do that no, i'm don't actually that. asking don't say it like that directly are you did you did you blow uh, up come today? on man that you know that ends the fucking scene mm -hmm. so <laughs> okay you're leaning in for a kiss all right <laughs> oh i wish that had ended the scene that could have been an amazing sex scene between Hank Reardon and Francisco D'Anconia. Oh, in the burned out fucking Just steel refinery with smudgy fucking all over the place. Sparks in the background. Yeah, one of them just opens that bottled water and pours it over both of them. Yeah. Just a perfect yeah. puddle of Fuck tears yeah. and cum and copper. Sexy. Uh, smudgy fucking is the name my Ted Nugent couple there right, there you go. A couple of CG it. explosions in there. Be yeah. Amazing. yeah. <laughs> if Cecil beat me to the other one, I'm calling smudgy fucking. Hell yeah. <laughs> if you'd like your smudgy fucking t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> what was it? Freedom next to mahogany, smudgy fucking puddle of tears and cum. There puddle of tears and cum. There we go. So then we cut to the Utah Technical Institute or whatever. And I love that it's completely abandoned because I'm just like, well, yeah, it's Utah. I mean, the, yeah. well, the Technical Institute. Couldn't staff it. Have, yeah. But of course, like that, this is post-apocalyptic or whatever. So trash litters the street like New York City on a normal Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody driving on the street. But Dagny now is going to see Quentin, the, you know, undrafted engine scientist. I like that Noah preempted Cecil for making fun of you. Yeah, I was going to make that joke, but Noah jumped like, in. It's like, with the oh, you're saying, you're saying jumps garbage. In the way. No, Fuck. it's great. You're great. It's garbage. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I also like that she takes a taxi that's like forty dollar gallon gas. Like a taxi's already expensive, but she somehow takes a taxi there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fucking car <laughs> in the streets. Like, don't take my car. Yeah. yeah. Why would you? I don't. 
They're all over the place. In Utah, you could just put a sign on your car that says, please don't steal. And they won't. And you can yeah. leave it anywhere. <laughs> it's like a piece of masking tape on your thing in the fridge. You're saying, yeah, right. Sandwich. You know yeah, it's exactly. yours. Yeah. And so, okay. But Quentin has to show her that he actually managed to fix the engine in significantly under 500 years. And so he turns it on. And Mike, this graphic looks like something out of Bible, man. Honestly, it would have been better for him to just be like, Yes, right. Or, or, or they could have done like you know, like they did back in the eighties with shit, where they're, we just see them looking at it, you know, yeah. like a fucking briefcase from Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's like Marcellus Wallace briefcase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, and they could just be like, "Wow, it sure does look very mm. interesting Ooh, from our angle." Yeah, MacGuffin. <laughs> but it's not though. Yeah. Right. No, it's not. It would like solve the problems of the world, but they won't give it to the world. No. Nope. Because fuck you. Because mine. And he's like, she's like, oh, so it's fixed and it's running. He's like, not quite. And she's like, really? Because it was literally, it was just on it's and there were little on. sparkly yeah. shit. And he's like, no, it, it needs something else. And she says, what? And he goes, don't ask the quantum the quantum thing the entanglements of (laughs) of it and and he's she says well how long will it take you to fix it (laughs) and he goes uh but remember when i said it was going to be between five minutes and 200 years so i want a a broader range so between this is his actual range a week and a thousand (laughs) lifetimes okay (laughs) all right okay so i either need you know till next tuesday or Infinite monkeys typing on infinite <laughs> cult fusion engines. Good to know. I think I know why John Galt didn't come get this guy. <laughs> this guy understands deadlines, though. I mean, he definitely sets the expectations right, yes, where they exactly, need to be. Right. You know yep, what I mean? He's just yep. like, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just going to keep fucking with it for a little while. You don't this mind, is do like you? the release date on a fucking Ubisoft game or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, however, when I realized, I had the terrifying realization that the billionaires are purposefully sabotaging the world makes a ton of sense, not just as a plot point, but also as our reality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's, and he says, what you really need to do is find the person who created this engine in the first place. And she's like, we, we tried that in the last movie. It turned out to be an yeah. incredibly boring series of scenes. It was Cecil's best worst, yeah, actually. It was, it was really stupid. <laughs> oh, you think? Oh, I should try and find the guy who made the great magic engine? <laughs> I didn't think of that. I thought I would go to a science guy and then his third choice. I thought I would do that yeah. first nuclear guy. Maybe you can line him up like a trail of candy, but on a map of the U.S., like I'm in fucking Street Fighter 2 <laughs> flying around <laughs> for 20 minutes of a movie. <laughs> not a very good scientist if you're asking that question now. Right, okay? yeah, exactly. Just, you know what I just thought of? A human built this. Yeah. Now, if you think about it, this is not naturally occurring at all. You're fired. <laughs> Do you have the manual for this? I meant to ask. Do you have the manual? Yeah. I can okay. search for it. I Google it. So then we have to we have to go to my other favorite part of this movie, which is the hearing where Hank Am I being detained so fucking hard that everyone oh else God. just dies? God, I, look, <laughs> look, it's very hard to say anything good about these movies, came from these movies, but I promise you, there is an NFT bro not rolling down the window for a cop right now because he saw this movie <laughs> and yep. electricity is going to make him go night night. Yes. 100% yes. yelling at a cop. I don't recognize this police officer. Yes. Yeah. Well, don't care. Oh god. So, first of all, why wouldn't he just be at a people court? Right? Like when you when you institute new laws, they don't get their own courts. Yeah. He would just be at a regular court. Why is there 30 judges? Right. Like, why are there, why is there like a whole team of judges? Why is there stadium seating? Why are there no lawyers? For the, everybody to be like, <laughs> rabble, rabble after everything. It's so dumb. It's just, it's just him appearing before the fucking Jedi Council. It is. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> With a fucking Little League audience behind him or something. <laughs> and does... Okay, I just want to clarify what his actual am I being detained argument is. Mm -hmm. Is his actual I am being detained argument is you can convict me, but when you come to get your stuff, I'm going to go all floppy like a sleepy cat. (laughs) Yep. A sleepy cat, I say. (laughs) No, it's I'm going to shoot and murder you when you come to take my shit. Yeah. 
Be armed. Yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> yeah, he gives him the taxation is theft line, and he's like, and if you send the police to arrest me, they're gonna have to shoot me because I'll kill them on the way. I'm like, yeah. how is he the fucking good guy? And the whole audience is like, oh, that's a really good point about you. Yeah, no, yeah. Think like, about yeah, shooting them smart. in the face. Really good speech. I like him. Should I slow <laughs> clap now or no? Yeah. Okay, how does wait. money work? <laughs> oh, he, I hate to argue with you here on the podcast, but not not everyone in the audience, because there is a hero in this movie, my friends, and it is the extra yeah. who did not realize she was being part of the Atlas Shrugged 2 movie. <laughs> and so she <laughs> has her arms crossed in front of her chest. She's directly behind Reardon's fucking face. And she's just like, boo, fuck this guy. <laughs> oh, I missed her. Just like AOC behind Joe Manchin exactly. in that fucking <laughs> Yes. This extra has very been clearly been instructed to like join in and clap. And she's just like, no, fuck you. You premature ejaculate. <laughs> this is not worth the 18 bucks. And so fuck your face. Tears and comes a shitty band. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and also I should point out like his speech overstates the case in their movie. They could have made the thing he was talking about the reality of the movie. They create the reality. But he's like, <laughs> he's like, but this fair share law, if it requires me to get nothing for my labors, and it's like nobody was trying to do that nobody even in that. your movie. You're refusing to. He's literally a billionaire, though. Yes. He got billions for his labors. What are you talking about? All these people are hugely rich. And nobody was at this point in the movie trying to take anything from him. They were trying to buy it. For money. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole time in the speech, he's like, public good. Fuck those people. And everybody's like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck those <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Jerry. 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 But then he says, I'm a job creator, which is his argument that I'm for the public good. So yeah. again, he contradicts himself. Yep. But then once again, the American government is like, we're a bigger job creator you get that right that like, we are <laughs> especially if we have bigger than steel everything in this country as much as the we're all of it yeah at one point one of the judges asks like how is your crazy i work for nothing but my own profit philosophy better for everybody and he's like i don't have to answer that first of all i don't have to answer that i don't know you shit in fact, I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. You can't see me. I'm invisible. <laughs> but, but to answer your question of my own free will, I might hire them, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the judges are like, well, you know, we would really love to enforce laws, but I mean, our, yeah. our flags do have gold fringe around the edges of them. So he's yeah. right. <laughs> They actually, they actually pause for a second and like put their hands over their mouth yeah. and they they confer and it's like whisper, whisper. This guy's way too fucking smart. I don't know. If we can, I don't think we can. Oh, do, he, this guy's a fucking. Genius. He isn't being detained. Oh my gosh, he will definitely not get taste. He said the thing about the gold fringe. He should not roll down his window for that. How cop. does he know about the gold fringe? We actually have to not convict him because of the gold uh, he's fringe. pretty good at risk control too. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so he could totally fight a cop. He came at me like this, like this. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole crowd is like. Uh, U.S. Oh, captain, my yeah. captain, and they start yeah, exactly. standing up on their fucking chair. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, oh god. So after the hearing, he's hanging out with Dagny, and she just can't believe how heroic his greed is. She's like, she actually says, she's like, you finally give it a voice to the people. I'm like, yeah, the poor, overlooked, off forgotten billionaires who don't want to pay taxes <laughs> finally have a voice. People hate us because we're their voice. This movie. <laughs> Paul Ryan in the mirror every morning. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> everything they say in this movie, everything is what your mom tells you when you're crying. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's this movie. It's so good. No, it's people hate because you because you're jealous too amazing. Of how because awesome your are penis is too funny. big. And that's why nobody wants to have sex with you. It's too much. It's too good. <laughs> your mom says weird shit to you when you cry. You make them come too much. <laughs> So and then and then we get this badass music kicks up and, and we see a bunch of crusty old white guys reservoir oh, dogging their way yes. into the Taggart Transcontinental yes. boardroom. 
so fucking so that music Eli was just singing is happening <laughs> yes. and they are slow motion walking and I was like I don't know who these people are yet it's new characters and they're slow motion walking in their suits and they've got briefcases and three piece suits and there's yes. fucking Brandon and now heavy metal guitar and then it's like click 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 board meeting Taggart <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So emergency sad. board meeting. If you were to <laughs> guess based on the music, you would assume that like Jason Statham just showed up with the League of Assassins. <laughs> right. If you were to guess based on your eyes, the old country buffet opened 20 minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> just did. Yeah. And they just got finished mall walking and they're on yeah, their exactly, way over right exactly. now. It's, it's Sunday afternoon. And we're putting yeah. cover sheets on all the TPS yeah. reports from now on. So, yeah, so they're having this business meeting, and we learn here that James doesn't have the balls to really business, right? The, the bad guys are like, the first order of business here is that we have to take care of the workers, and we all gasp, and, you know, like, oh, my God, taking care of, fuck the workers. Yeah, and they have to, <laughs> it's another one of those moments where the actor doesn't really get the line because it doesn't make any sense. So he's like, we want to make things good for the workers, Oh, I'm a bad guy. If you know what I mean. (laughs) 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 Evil. What? We could set the standard for workers' rights. Evil, 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 evil. (laughs) Can I get like a brandy to swish when I say this? I don't know how to make this evil. (laughs) Okay. I just have to talk about this because it's so fucking good. Dagny is supposed to be right. The whole part of Ayn Rand's stupid little power fantasy to hardcore businesswoman with a heart of steel. And blah, 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 blah. aside from the fact that she's already cried over a train line once in this movie, they're like, hey, we got to shut down the John Galt line because like Keith mentioned earlier, the fucking guy blew up all his fields. So it does absolutely nothing. And they're like, Dagny, <laughs> do, do you think we should shut down the line? And she's like, I'm giving this board meeting the silent treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that line like a mother. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, I'm taking my ball and going home and you guys could all fuck yourself and runs out. And they're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to close down the line we, though. Right. We're just going to take, you didn't take your ball. Cause that's not we, how it works. We don't, the ball's still here. We're all, we are the ball. We're the whole company. I do love that. They used bridge to nowhere though. In this scene. That yes. was my favorite. I was like bridge to nowhere. I was like, I know where that comes from. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. But that's the thing. She did do that. Like now her yeah, bridge like goes literally... to fucking nowhere. It doesn't matter because she did a dumb speculation on a fucking, uh, a, a, a natural gas fracker and it yeah. didn't work out and he lit his natural gas and oil on fire and now her stupid train line does nothing. It's her fault. Right. And she, <laughs> she yells at the government and cries and runs out. A hundred percent. And yet the movie gives us the fucking sad like Hulk walking away music and shit you know as she <laughs> as she walks down the John Galt line and watches them pull up all of these rails that she just put in in the last movie. Right. Yeah. Paul Ryan tearing up in front of it like Encanto. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the part that gets me. Yeah. Oh man. So her and Hank Reardon apparently went to co- they, they this board meeting happened. Then the two of them went to Colorado to watch to watch it to yeah. watch the the sad the sad line get pulled up for like two minutes. And then leave. They're like, yeah, that was sad. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Oh my God, are you sad pianoing along the line too? I'm sad pianoing on the other side of the line. We should walk together. (laughs) And the music's like putting a dog down, but it's like a fucking bridge that currently goes to an oil field that's on on fire. fire. Like it literally has no use. (laughs) And rain will make the (laughs) flower. I love the little hug they share at the end of the scene where they're like, it's everyone's fault but ours. And I wrote in my notes, Randy and philosophy in a nutshell, ladies yep. and gentlemen. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to Hank's wife having a meeting with James Taggart so they can collude about how to get him to give the steel away to the government. Yeah. Since courts didn't work i enjoyed his little speech here he's like hey lillian i need you to get hank to shut the fuck up and stop being honest about rich white people and what we're thinking because you're making us look like idiots (laughs) (laughs) he was (laughs) because he was way too honest in that hearing yeah she's like all right well i've got a we'll blackmail him with the affair that i know he's having right the entire point of the scene but the crowd cheered 
Like, I don't yeah. get it. Like, why, why are you upset? Like, like clearly the common people in the stands at the court were super excited. Oh, yeah. Right. So why the, are you the so voters mad? Are, are digging the whole greed thing. Yeah, exactly. She's like, what's in it for me? And he goes, vague promises. She's like, well, then I have a vague plan. <laughs> 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 vague go on meanwhile yeah so then we cut to the fucking colluders at collusion hq right this is so amazing they have this moment where they all just sit around all the bad guys sit around in a room just going like you know what i hate capitalism and supply and demand and everything yeah, like, yeah fuck supply and demand yeah <laughs> And the main guy is the guy who got turned into liquid in RoboCop, by the way. He's the guy oh, who gets run he? over at the end. So let Wesley Mouch is the guy who's like, help me, help oh, me. And they run no a car shit. through him. Yeah, yeah, man, it's the same dude. As soon as I saw him, I was like, that's the same guy. And then I looked, I'm like, yep, RoboCop. Oh, fuck yeah. RoboCop. You're right. Now this is the movie I wanted him to be turned into liquid. Second right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But except for he's the good guy in this movie, right? Yeah. And well, they forget again, the move, the, the Wesley Mouch is the like czar of economy and he's supposed to be a bad guy according to Ayn Rand. But right here he says, yeah, so I think we can all agree that capitalism doesn't work without some kind of regulation. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, fucking obviously. He's like, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> without regulation. Regulation. So can you, can you steeple your fingers when you say that, please, so that it's clear to everybody that you're being an asshole? Yeah. And, and, and they're like, yeah. And this is where Ray Wise suddenly cuts in on their emergency television line to tell them that he's enacting Directive 10289. Oh my God. It, the, you could only, this is the final post on a Herman Cain award, the law. Right. From everyone <laughs> has to stay in their job forever. Yep. And no one can get a raise or quit or be fired. Yeah. Yes. Or turn 18 or graduate oh. <laughs> or die anything. or be bored. Right. All the numbers are the same from now on. So there's no moving of uh, numerical values at all. That's also <laughs> right. decreed. And all inventions are given to us, uh, the government, as a, an Amazon gift card or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no making new stuff either. You, oh, but I just thought of something. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Can't all, you no, also you can't make new things. No new inventions. No yes. inventing things. Right. God, it's so silly. The newscaster comes up afterwards and he goes, that's weird. You would have thought we'd had a vote on something or something <laughs> for that. I, sorry. One other thing about the rule. You have to spend the same amount yes, every what? year. You have to spend the same amount of money every year? Well, fuck, Carol. You just had to get the countertops done this year, didn't you? <laughs> so fucking stupid. I hope you like getting the countertops done oh, every single everybody year. Everybody who God bought damn. a house that year really is <laughs> fucked it up. We, we own three quarters of New Jersey, thanks to you, <laughs> Carol. It's so Ayn Rand is so fucking stupid. She thinks that Socialism will be, you know, okay, well, the economy is really bad. We better freeze it in exactly place. Exactly at this just badness. Like this by making all the numbers. The Gas can never be less than $40 a gallon. Yeah. And then we get this ominous fucking police state montage, right? With the, where everyone has to deal with the weirdness of Directive 10 to 89. We keep flashing to this homeless guy who is carving a very dramatic tombstone for America. <laughs> yes. But because of what just they announced, I was like, okay, so does the homeless guy have to stay homeless? <laughs> he can't get a job. Yeah, well, he can't get a job. Even, did he make one exactly tombstone for America last year? Because if he didn't, <laughs> this is against law. <laughs> okay, Joe, Joe, how much did you spend on crack last year? What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> where, where are your receipts? You, this, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. The law says you have to keep your receipts. <laughs> All right. Well, now that they've constructed a straw man that would make the witches of Summer Isle jealous, I suppose we can pause for a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. How the fuck would any of this work? <laughs> Do people who just graduated have to go through their senior year over and over again? What if you were doing seasonal work at the time? Oh, God. Find out the answers to absolutely nothing. 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 When we return for the exciting conclusion to the preface of another movie that is <laughs> Atlas Shrugged 2, The Strike. I quit the show. It's January 1st every day. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, God. 
Hi, I'm Cecil something Italian. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm No Illusions. We're here to tell you about this week's sponsor, Masterclass. And I'm here to tell you about my sponsor, Clastermass. Eli, what's Clastermass? No, no, Cecil, don't, ah, don't take the bait. He's No, I just, oh, I just okay, wanted the point. Oh, uh, for the point. Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah. Cecil gets one. Yeah, Fine. no, we'll put him on the board. It's a very special course website where you can learn all the things that I, Eli Bosnick, know. Okay, but with Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, improve your chess skills with Gary Kasparov, or learn comedy from Steve Martin. With over a 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. And with class or mass, I will show you how to make crackers. Like from scratch or just like on a plate? On a plate, the second one. What? When I signed up for Masterclass, I loved their class on space travel by commander of the ISS, Chris Hatfield. Well, I have the commander of ISIS on Claster Pass. What? what? It's not on purpose. It just kind of happened. They hacked in. Okay, and they... well, I highly recommend you check it out. The, the Masterclass, not what mm -hmm. Eli's talking about. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a god awful movies listener, you get 15% off an annual subscription. Go to masterclass.com slash awful right now. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off masterclass. Yeah, actually, maybe don't use Cluster Pass. It's pretty much just for terrorist cell communication at this point. Again? It's only happened twice. Mr. Johnson, who are you? I'm a man with a proposal. You've made literally billions of dollars with your company, but have you considered leaving this world behind? Not really, no. Have you ever longed for a world that could offer you more? Uh, nope. I'm a billionaire. I literally have so much money it would be impossible to spend in my lifetime. Yes, yes. But the moochers, they take so much from you. Oh, no, they don't. I barely pay taxes. Honestly... If you do the math, I pay, like, negative taxes. Okay, but where I'm inviting you, there will be no taxes. Okay, like I said, it doesn't affect me. How how are you going to have, like, roads and stuff? Enterprising men like yourself will build them and keep all the profits. Yeah, I don't know how to do that, though. But you'd learn how to do it if it made you rich. Again, already rich. Sorry, is your place going to have something that literally the rest of the world won't have? Like art or music or food? Is there something there that, that makes it more appealing? Uh, well, I mean, a bunch of rich white guys. Oh, definitely worse people on the planet. I, yeah, I'm going to pass. I'm just going to pass. We have, uh, we have a magic engine. Cool. You should sell that and be rich then. N no. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's so stupid. What are you Everything doing? about it is so stupid. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action back at the steel plant where an evil government guy is ready to take all of Hank's patents. <laughs> but he's <laughs> apparently he like broke into Hank's office and he's just he's playing with this sad little metal <laughs> sculpture <laughs> when Hank walks in. And it's the best. It's like he's getting caught with it. He's like, I wasn't playing what? with your desk I thing. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't touching it. I was stopping it. Someone was in here earlier. It was a black guy. <laughs> and he was playing it. I said, get out of here. And I was, was putting it back. Did you break it? I feel like that's supposed to be super safe. How did that happen? He says, we're going to we're gonna take your metal and we're going to change the name of it to Miracle Metal instead of Reardon Steel. And do you know why? And he's like, why? And he's like, because... Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I wanted Hank to be like, hold on. Um, how many of my inventions did you take last year? <laughs> <laughs> it was zero. I feel so. like. I don't know. And the guy's just like, fuck. All right. Hold on. I gotta oh, make a phone call. He's foiled. just waiting out. In the, Jesus. <laughs> in the waiting room. We forever. didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, now I'm not going to sign the paper. And he's like, what if we blackmailed you with these pictures of you and Dagny holding hands? And he's like, oh, well, in that case, what if two people had a consensual relationship? Oh, shit. I'll just sign my seal. <laughs> order. Like, I, oh, that's my fault. I'm stupid. I want to talk about the photos, though, because look, this actress is in this movie, so she deserves some punishment. 
But these photos are just her being like, oh, fun, touching. Oh, oh we're touching touch- each other now, huh? More touching. Take the photo. Ta- all The <laughs> captions on every photo is take the fucking photo. <laughs> They're doing a smooch in one of them. And truly, truly, I have kissed Heath with more consent and aplomb <laughs> multiple times. We've shared two, I would say, very nice kisses. Have we not? So- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sensual. This, Certainly compared to this. I don't think that's where the joke was supposed to go. <laughs> but yes, yes. So she's, we have pictures of her kissing this guy who obviously you get nicotine stains from like standing near, right? <laughs> oh, there's no amount of mouthwash. Whatever this actress yep. used. So meanwhile, we, we cut over to Dagny and she's reading Directive 10-289, which is approximately 1400 pages or so right now because people keep saying like did you take exactly one medal from me last year <laughs> right, they have to keep adding shit to it or something Wait, so she, she ordered a paper copy of that law and the government sent it to her they had the internet when this movie was made right right yeah the internet was a thing she could have just been scrolling through it it seriously looks like one of those old auto manuals you used to have to look up to change your carburetor. Yeah. Like it looks like one of those things. Like that you go to auto zone and you're like, can I see the manual? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> right. Also, did they make 10 289 laws last year? Right, I feel like yeah. this is, it's already broken its own rule. How much, how many papers <laughs> did you ship to her? Yeah. So, and then, oh, and there's this great moment. Like, so Eddie brings her a, a tablet, right? Just to remind us that, yes, she could absolutely be scrolling through an iPad or something. It's the future. Yeah. And it, he says, you're going to want to watch this on the news. And it's the thing that they always do in movies where the newscaster just happens to summarize the point right when the main character starts watching. <laughs> so the newscaster is like, and it turns out that Hank Reardon has voluntarily handed over his patent for now miracle medal and that's the plot point and she's like oh no <laughs> and i let him do outfit stuff so so the assistant was like standing outside of the office being like all right i gotta time this just right just right <laughs> Dive Shit. Shit. Ooh, i watch right oh. commercial break commercial break <laughs> fuck Shit. Oh, i missed the segment i gotta wait until it re-airs again i'm gonna go wait outside until it comes back until the commercial i'm gonna wait outside. I'll, go, I'll go back I'll out through the broken glass that, that's <laughs> so, me that's that's on me you should really get youtube premium because you don't have ads <laughs> How much glass did we buy last year? Hopefully some. <laughs> How many iPads did we buy? Yeah, we right. right. One somewhere? So and then so she hears this on the news and she goes to James's office to bitch at him for all the colluding he's been doing with these government representatives and their regulations. Damn it. So she quits. She's done with all of this government regulation bullshit. And he's like, well, you can't actually quit. It's part of the thing. And she's like, oh, well, try to stop me. And he's like, right, that can't make you work this is so fucking dumb <laughs> so she calls reardon from her car and he's i guess he's walking through a barrel fire slum somewhere <laughs> why would he be he's a billionaire all the ceos in the world that are still left are wandering around these barrel fires being like i can't quit my job or get a new one <laughs> Yeah, but so, and then of course he, he calls his lawyer and demands that the lawyer find a way to get him a divorce from his wife that he hates. I want a divorce on Grubhub right now. <laughs> I want to uh, tell him it wasn't here. There's, I'm telling him the pizza wasn't here on time. I know it was. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, so we get James, he's pulling up at work and the protesters are, are attacking his car. And I love, so the, protesters now have completely shifted sides these are different smudgy protesters yeah because these ones are against directive 10 289 yeah but they still want to attack the cars outside of taggart continental for whatever reason <laughs> they're just like they flip their signs over at a certain point they're like okay now we're liberal protesters and they they were really taxing the extra budget here because there's only like six of them Right. Yeah. I mean, there's only like, yeah, we're like, no, sorry, man. We can't, we, we can give you free craft service. No. Okay. All right. Fine. We'll smudge the other side of your yeah, face. Smudge the the left side. <laughs> By the way, one of these signs literally says 10 289 ain't so fine. <laughs> it's, it's a written sign. That's the best. That's it's a best. written sign. They didn't even write out nine. It's just that's the 10-289 number. 10-289 is the number that's on my side. 
that rhymes <laughs> with tines. And forks have tines. Every, oh, you know, I, you, you gotta read it aloud. Read my sign. You'll get it. You'll get it if you say it. So yeah, so, so, but Dagny leaves and then he, James wanders into the little, like the, the central train depot room and he just randomly promotes somebody. Yeah, Mitchum. COO Mitchum now. And that's yes. that really, really, really awkward guy who kind of sounds like he's hey, every time he talks. That, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that guy. Yeah. Right. He's like, you you can do her job, can't you? And he's like, I'm literally like the least senior person in this room. He's like, ah, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> I can get you coffee. No. Okay. I'll go back to work. And they're pretending like he couldn't do anything. But he obviously could because he's he's supposed to be like, I don't know what to do. Normally, when trains don't work, Dagny picks them up and throws them onto the new part of the track personally. And then they work again, I think, is what she does. I don't know how to throw a train personally. I think that's what she does. Ah, uh, so good. But it's not. This is nothing. He would obviously all the people along this line would know what to do. Dagny would not have to be there. Yes. Right. Well, and, and if not, if there's like one person who's responsible for all the trains all the time ever, when does she shit? <laughs> right. Right. Like what happens if a train has to go through a tunnel while she's taking a dump? She has conversations while she's shitting. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Podcast listener, to give you an idea of how absurd this will be, a little spoiler for the rest of the movie. Dagny was apparently the person who kept Trains from going in opposite ends of tunnels. Right, yeah. right. Without her, trains are just going in the opposite direction on the same fucking track all of a sudden. Are there other train companies who don't have somebody quite as smart as her and they sometimes do that? I don't. <laughs> in this universe? <laughs> so we follow Dagny to the old family cabin in upstate New York where she's decided to go. She's angrily throwing patio furniture for yes. reasons that are never clarified to my to my understanding. Oh, uh, nothing more relatable than when you're having a tough time at work. So you go to your family's multi-million dollar cabin in Woodstock, New York. Yeah. I think we can all relate. <laughs> Fuck this Adirondack chair and socialism. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I've been driven to this summer house. Driven, I say, <laughs> by my chauffeur. They never explain the chair throwing you. They never nope, explain. No. They don't talk about it. Nope. They're just like, nope, it's just chair throwing. That's just what you do. It's just... Sometimes you get mad and you throw. I think she just got mad in the scene. They were like, I guess we're keeping this. We don't have time. Just keep this rolling. This is what she did after the kissing photos montage. She oh, was there like, you I go. need to throw. There's like, guys, this is a weird one to say, but we sit. We don't have a single shot where she's not throwing a fucking chair. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Samantha, you okay? Fuck. Adirondack chairs. All right. <laughs> Tasted like Nicorette gum. I didn't like it. Tastes like nicotine. So then we cut to Quentin, the engine guy. He's... So thanks to Goodwill Hunting, now everyone has to math on a clear oh, screen, a glass or a mirror <laughs> or something. So he's mathing on a clear screen. We're like, there's a fucking whiteboard right behind him. Literally though. right behind him. It's yeah. so stupid. <laughs> Just one movie, I want someone to be writing on glass and the other person to be writing on the other side. And they're like, this is not, I can't see anything. I hate this. <laughs> And so then we, we cut to the train traffic control room or whatever. And so we have to see what happens when Dagny quits her job. And isn't this just the fantasy of ever libertarian, right? Like this is what would happen to the Chili's yeah. if they ever quit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everyone who ever quit me and Noah, when we were middle managers at a toy store, this is what they imagined would happen. Yes, this was their fucking, they went home to jerk off to this fucking <laughs> scene. Yes. Everything falls apart when I'm not, there. The the plastic thumbs no longer lit up and everyone's hands got on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we have this there's a senator who we haven't met yet. He's on a train and the train breaks down because everything's falling apart without all of these first round draft picks that John Galt stole, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the senator's pissed and he's like, I don't give a fuck about safety. I want to get to California tonight. So he calls James. He calls the president of this train line and he's like, make my train go. And James is like, oh, yes, sir. I'll make your train go. I'll be honest, All right, yeah, I'll just push the magic. Again, this explains so much about the fucking Republican. Mo they actually believe that if you speak to the manager, they can make the train go. <laughs> 
<laughs> they they think the toy they want is in the back. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but he's like, I, I don't think I can do it. He's like, I'll ruin your life in a vague way if you don't somehow make this train go from afar. And he's like, I got it. So he calls fucking Skippy, the guy he promoted. Right. And he's like, make this train go. And he's like, it's that doesn't it doesn't work like that, sir. Um, don't you throw it or something? What is that <laughs> you do? You know? <laughs> sir, I was very busy wetting my pants. I'm sorry. I yeah, you, right. interrupted, you interrupted me mid wet. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll fill it up with smoke. Will that help? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> well, yeah. So he says, all right, the only engine we have anywhere nearby there is the fucking, apparently the train from Buster Keaton's The General. <laughs> <laughs> right and he's like well you can't use a coal powered train to pull through a tunnel and he's like is that because it's not 1823 <laughs> no right <laughs> what and and he's like no it's because all of the smoke and he's like do it anyway and he's like but the smoke and he's like i don't care he's like but there's a train coming the other way <laughs> through the tunnel and he's like i still somehow don't care <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had to get a guy on uh, like the the train is so old they had to get an old timer to ride it because they're like yeah we found a guy he's like retired and we picked him up yeah. and we drafted him and he's going to drive the train because none of us thought to work a coal power train. <laughs> he was cryogenically frozen. His so name's John Spartan. <laughs> we had to get <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> Sloan. He still swears uh, a lot and he doesn't know uh, about the mini tunes. Are but... there three shells in this train or no? <laughs> okay. I wanted a flash cut to like Shining Time Station and they unlock Schemer from his cell. <laughs> <laughs> he clicks himself out a nickel one last time. <laughs> they said I'd get a full pardon if I did one <laughs> last <laughs> job. So yeah, so now they've got two trains going into the same tunnel of an opposite directions on the same track, and oh shit, will the other train make it or not? And I'm just of course I'm writing in my notes, stand your ground, train. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. If at this point the train had pulled itself up by its bootstraps yes. above the other yes. train, Would have been fine. it could not have been more ridiculous than the no. rest of this movie. Hold on. Well, I'm just getting, what does Dagny always say? Run the trains toward each other? Or, <laughs> it's, it's what not, was it? She's a genius. Not to pick up and throw. It's not run them towards each other. I, I'm out of ideas. Away. She would say away. Fuck. We did it by opposite. Oh, we did God opposite. damn it. So, yeah, so there's a train explosion in the tunnel and everything's fucked. That poor guy who came out of retirement. He's like, he's like Griggs from fucking Lethal Weapon. I had one more day to retirement. Right. And then he gets yeah. blown up. He's the fucking <laughs> first one to die. Oh, woof. Also, would a libertarian market solution for fucking trains make this better? Right. What, what would that mean? What, would, what is the book trying to say here? Well, it, what it's trying to say is if it wasn't for a smart, superior people, you assholes would probably run your trains into each other. But yeah, you guys just have one track going through a mountain. We would have two tracks. There, one, it was an one overly way. regulated. No, it would just be like murder trains and <laughs> they would all run and it would be like, who gets there first? Fuck you. If we're going 80 miles an hour and we leave New York, this is, uh, <laughs> the, no, <laughs> this is bad. It's an algebra problem done by a serial killer on your open beating heart. <laughs> uh. Why do you have different numbers of people tied up on each track? It's just, it, it's, it's a, for a thought experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Libertarian runs over them all. He doesn't give a fuck. You have to have the same number of people as last year <laughs> tied to the track. So meanwhile, Dagny's working on her cabin when Francisco Danconio shows up and he's like, you remember our backstory? And she says, no, tell me about it. <laughs> remember your childhood? No. No. Nope. Nope. And that, this is where he admits that he's the one that blew up the mines. He paid that After Effects guy to blow his mines up. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded several iPhone apps to blow up my mines. Also, they made me a little kick dancer. Look at this. This is great. <laughs> la, ba, la, ba, la, ba, la, 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 la. I couldn't get rid of the watermark on the explosion, but you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, but her phone rings. She finds out about the tunnel explosion, right? And she's like, I've got to go back and help out because, you know, the fact that I quit my job in a snit with no notice just cost 400 people their lives. Yeah, but now she's going to fucking really manage the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right, everyone. I'm going to create an Excel spreadsheet. Crack knuckles. <laughs> Push it to the limit. It's just one cell that says don't murder the train yeah, people. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, damn. One train per it track. It says one. Know, just track. have two tracks yeah so yeah and then a fucking newscaster comes on and summarizes all the shit that we already know as a viewer we've been watching too it's like tell us don't show us then tell us what you told us <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck so okay so dagny shows up at the train dispatching room right she turns to Eddie and she's like, get me the old rail maps. We're going to find a new route. Oh, yeah. And it's like, what? what is this? The Northwest Passage? Why would they need <laughs> old physical maps? I don't. Why wouldn't that be in the, the new computer maps? I feel like the new maps would have all the old map information plus the new information. That's where they made the new maps. From. That's why you make new maps, maps by yeah. definition. Yeah. yeah, if they don't have the old information, they're just called wrong maps. But wait, here's where I realized the most beautiful, this is actually the most beautiful moment in the movie. Because this movie, now th we just saw 400 people die, but the movie thinks the stakes of the movie is, how are they going to keep their trains running? Yes. 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 Can exactly. we run it over the corpses of the children that died? Right. No, they're too slippery. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go around. Also, they, so yeah, the, the, the fucking soundtrack is desperately trying to convince us that looking over old maps is super exciting. We also learn here that Mr. Mouch has the power to take over any screen a la yes. Max yes. fucking headroom. He does. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, he suddenly appears on the... This is the emergency train dispatch screen that tells you if two trains are about to hit each other. And he appears on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> it totally did. I really wanted another train accident to happen behind him, right? Like, he's like, all right, like, oh, we've all fuck, agreed. I'm on they, the main blinks, screen, aren't I? Shit. <laughs> it blinks That's away and me. there's eight more accidents. Oh, damn, I should have texted. <laughs> damn it. Uh, fuck, I really should have texted. I guess I could have just called you guys. I mean, admittedly, it was dramatic, but you know, yeah, bad call, bad call. That's on me, guys. Whoops. <laughs> and so this is great, too. And again, their writers have no idea what they're doing here. He calls to tell her that she's being exempted from Directive 10 to 289 to get these rail lines running again and she's like stay out of my way and he's like literally that's like i'm in the middle of telling you that i'm not gonna get out of and be in your way at all that's <laughs> that's the message right if i had to summarize what i was saying it's i'm not in your way <laughs> stay out of my way <laughs> or i wanted to be like no literally you're in the way of the screen that i use my <laughs> To reroute several trains through a tunnel. Yeah, right. right I have to, there's an yeah. emergency train screen behind you. Very busy. Meanwhile, Quentin is still hard at sciencing that engine. You know, he took, but can he science hard enough? <laughs> yeah. And then we, oh, some a mysterious man comes in the room. Yes, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just as he gets the engine putting out more power than it's taking in, a mysterious man in a hat shows up in the scene ends. Okay. So to be clear, John Galt was like waiting under the desk in that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That whole time for that impactful moment. Be like, you got One it, you got it. Okay. Two oh my Mississippi. God, my leg. Ran. I had a really bad Charlie horse. <laughs> that whole time you were trying the magnetic translucer and I was like, he is not going to fucking get this. I ate all my cliff bars and I was down there for another like hour and a half. <laughs> I've had Do you have shit. a bathroom? I have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So. So he does that. We cut back to Dagny on the train. The, the train is malfunctioning because, you know, all the best train repair people went to John Galt's Magic Valley, right? So she gets out of the train. The train repair guy's there, and she's like, yeah, this is going to take all fucking day. She's like, I'm going to take your truck. And he's like, ah, it's okay. I work for you. It's your truck. And he's like, she leaves, and he's like, oh, wait, that's how I get home. Fuck. Well, she questions him, though, because he has the hat of the place where they stole the engine. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she has that, he has that hat on. And then he's like, at one point he says, who's John Galt? And she says, I hate that saying. I wonder who started or something. He's like, well, I might've started it. And I'm like, th and then he goes on to tell you that he knows who John Galt is. I'm like, you started a saying about who's John Galt and you know who John Galt is? <laughs> it makes so little sense. Also, like John Galt was just the guy who worked at that factory. Why wouldn't somebody have just Googled it? Like, you know what? Now I know who John Galt is because I can look it up. 
Great question, Noah. Who is Cecil something Italian? I don't fucking know. <laughs> we've also, we've gotten this mysterious, like, backstory for John Galt, but this is where it's revealed that what happened is one day at the factory, they were like, all right, everyone, um, obviously, well, you know, we're going to pay everyone according to their needs. And John Galt was like, I will burn this country to the <laughs> fucking exactly ground! Yes, and yes, stomped right. out. And they yeah. were like, I've always thought that guy was a fucking psychopath. <laughs> he wants out Bane from Batman. Yeah. Yeah. To, to be clear, th this protagonist of the movie, the newest protagonist, he stopped inventing cold fusion for spite. Yes. Because, <laughs> because his factory was paying people in a way he didn't particularly like. Because someone might get paid according to their needs. Yeah. yeah. Fusion is best served cold, so. Yes. <laughs> it's like, but I know I've talked quite a bit about the toy store today, but it's like when I was a manager at the toy store one time, a guy on his first day popped the giant, terrible smelling plastic bubble against a display case and then texted me he quit to work on his erotic novels. I imagine John Galt is the that guy. Of that <laughs> well, right, and that's probably what the fucking saying originally meant. Like, you know, who's this self-important asshole? You know, who's yeah. John Galt? Someone turns to him at that meeting. Who the fuck is John? Yeah, Galt? right. And that's where the saying comes. You know, that sounds that's got a bit of a ring to it. He actually wrote "pounded in the butt" by my own libertarianism. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the engine of the world. You'll see. Okay. Seriously though, that's the quote here. John Galt said as he left. I will stop the motor of the world. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, for somebody getting a pay increase that he didn't get. It's yeah. so Spike. fucking petty. Yeah. So, so she calls quit. She's driving to him now, apparently. And she's like, I figured out who John Galt is and who built the engine. And, and it was John Galt who built the engine. It's just all <laughs> ties together. And, and, and he goes, Quentin goes, yeah, about that, I need to quit doing the oh, engine shit. It's so crazy you mentioned John Galt because this is totally unrelated. <laughs> I <laughs> quit. Run away! So this guy took a shit under my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with my story. I gotta go work on my erotic novels. I'm busy. So, yeah. <laughs> I also want to point out that like, unlike everyone else who has mysteriously disappeared, apparently John Galt needs scientist guy to fucking jog out of there he's gotta run to a plane to a train to a fucking thing yeah he's like look I, I didn't think it was gonna take you this long to figure out the fucking engine man so the plane leaves in like eight minutes <laughs> sorry I can't give you a Batman disappearance I'm gonna need you to sprint down a runway <laughs> yes so and we should point out okay to this moment, except for the fact that we so showed the final scene at the beginning of the movie, we've had no indication in two films that this woman knows how to fly a fucking plane. No. <laughs> right? So she shows up at this airstrip and she's like, I want to buy this airplane. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. You probably have cash for that on you. And she's like, yep, cash. Or either that or you just took a check for an airplane. <laughs> Uh, do you have Do you have a credit card machine? You do. All right, excellent. Well, you know what? He's probably used to taking like eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar payments on credit card for oil. Sometimes for gas, people yeah. need to yeah. yeah fill up their cars. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, so she flies to Utah. This is so fucking stupid. As she's landing, she looks down at the runway and she sees Quentin, who she can recognize from you know. Airplane distances. <laughs> yeah. Very distinctive top of the head question. <laughs> very distinctive. You could just tell, but he runs awkwardly. You could just tell yeah. it's him. Right. You know it's him. Gate. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he's also, he's running next to John Galt, who's, whose yeah. legs are caked in shit because he had to leave right away from that whole day <laughs> under a desk shitting. So he is not clean. It's, it's really, it's an awkward run. Sorry. The only restaurant we have right now in my weird valley is a Mexican place and it's just been a nightmare. <laughs> Great first couple of days, but the, you know, the fourth taco. Sure. We, we haven't gotten around to, you know, you don't go, in, you don't go for cooks right away, not in the first few rounds. You right. Know but I mean? even if you digested really well, you, you shat everywhere. So like, yeah. if it was a clean shit, so. it would still be shit all Who's over you. Who's John Galt? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah, and of course, this is where the plane chase begins, because just as she's about to land her plane, their plane takes off. So she has to chase it. And they have a futuristic plane, too. It's not the same. Yes. Plane. Yeah. They have it's like a, a Harrier very, jet. Yeah. Very better. Much better plane. Right. And I wrote my notes because this is pretty impressive to me. I'm like, somehow, now that they've clarified the stakes of this plane chess, it's less interesting. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Because because she's chasing this plane to figure out where the repairman went. Yep. That's it. <laughs> She's chasing down an exit interview. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they they fly to their, we're, we're about to find out, their secret valley, but they don't have to, they could just, if they somebody's following behind you and you don't want them to you find your land, secret valley. You just land, you go anywhere you, you land else. anywhere else in the universe Any besides other your place. secret valley. This is the only place where you're not fucking things. Yeah, <laughs> Dagny lands next to you and you're like, oh, are you just going to stand there next to me forever? Before you, we'll just, just, what are we doing? We're not going to go. We're not going to go to the valley until you leave. <laughs> I'm not being detained, am I? Okay, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll shit right here all day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I brought a cliff bar. You'd be amazed at the commitment I have to just sitting in one place. <laughs> So, yeah, but we get the plane chase, the, the plane Wakanda's in front of her, and then her plane Wakanda's, and the red alerts are going off. We're caught back up with the intro. She says, who is John Galt? And then crashes her plane for reasons that the movie hasn't remotely clarified. Yeah, she hits a she hits a tree really high up because as soon as she hits the tree, they show the ground and it's really far away. Like a she's still in the air. Feet down. Like, yes. yes, she is still like <laughs> thousands of feet in the air and she hit a tree that was like floating nearby, I guess. I don't know. You know the land in Mario Three? Yeah. <laughs> That. Well, she has to tame a dragon now. Oh, it's yeah, so it's good. a capitalist tree, so you know what that means. Infinite growth. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Right. Thank you. Bravo. Well done. So, but so, but she crashes her plane. Luckily, she does it very lightly. She lightly crashes her plane. <laughs> like a lady. She boops it to the ground. She right. Boops yeah. It. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And luckily, apparently, fucking John Galt was just sitting around in that field, you know, shitting into a fucking hole and eating his fucking Clark yeah. bar or whatever. <laughs> he welcomes everyone personally to his hologram. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah, even when they <laughs> crash land even when they into crash it. Land. Yeah, no, yeah. So, yeah, so. <laughs> Don't be stupid. That's, of course. She's pulling herself out of the wreckage and a mysterious man shows up and she says, who are you? And he's like, really? You don't. Yeah, I mean, come, come on. on. It's so obvious who I am. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. I'm not the fucking pirate. That's what I'm not. OK, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Fuck. Who's Dagny Taggart? Now you say <laughs> something. Oh, uh, flirt danger breast. Yeah. So he's like, I'm John Galt. And they're like, finally. And he's like, nope, the movie's over. Actually, yeah, yeah. you got to wait for it. We got to wait for the third part, which has even less action in it. Jesus. Well, they they did a really smart thing in this, though. They didn't show his face so that we could later on just choose a different actor. Right. Because yeah, they're exactly. they've, they've, no, they've been known to do this. They've been hurt once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So and that's it. So a final question to close things off. I hire you to save this movie, but you're only allowed to reshoot the final eight seconds of the film. In your version, who is John Galt? Bernard Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> that He's is a the twist. Mittens, yeah. That's a twist, right, man. Yeah, with That's the mittens, a twist. Yes. yes uh, wow. Yeah, I'm going with The Rock, and then he does the people's elbow on her. Ooh, when she's on the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going Joseph Rogan. And oh, he's, okay. He's, oh, all right. Yeah. Coughing and a, a sneezing, villain, villain. not yeah. running everywhere. He's clearly got COVID, covered in horse cream. I was going to go with the Kool Aid Man, but I feel like Keith and I kind of have the same answer at that point. So. <laughs> that's true. Big red. Hey, thing. the yeah. Kool Aid Man's not shaped that weird. Well, that's true. All right, we'll see. So, thank you so much. Man's much safer from a virus. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. He just takes out walls. Usually, they the buildings remain structurally uh, sound. He's got a lot less blood on his hands. Let's be honest. <laughs> True that. All right. So, Cecil, thank you again so much for suffering alongside us for a second week in a row. And if you don't mind, can you remind the audience where they can go to hear more from you? Yeah. You go to dissonancepod.com or citationpod.com. Those are the two podcasts that I do that I take part in. Awesome. And of course, those will be linked to the show notes as well. And well, that does it for our review of Atlas Shrug 2. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to abandon all hope for next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Part three, baby. We bring oh, it in. All right. Better be a pirate.
or I'm driving to New Jersey if there's no pirate. I'm driving a fucking Oh, there's New a Jersey. fucking pirate, Cecil. Okay. Oh, yeah. you, I can't pirate. wait for you to see this pirate. That's going to be so awesome. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. be so mad. So with a pirate and a 72-page monologue to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 338 <laughs> to a merciful close. That's not an exaggeration. Uh, once again, a huge thanks to Cecil for hanging out with us yet again this week, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, the aforementioned Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotting of the Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then. We'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Everyone in America ran around screaming, I need a rich white person. I don't know what to do. Murder. It was pandemonium. Something piratey eventually happened. <laughs> Temporary COO Mitchum successfully peed someone else's pants. <laughs> Dagny's unregulated freedom plane exploded and killed everyone in the valley. Uh -huh. It was the best. <laughs> <laughs> A happy ending. <laughs> uh, if only. Market <sighs> solution. <laughs>